Today, we stand at the threshold of a golden age in space exploration. The ability of humans to return to the moon is one of the most noteworthy missions. Renowned for its pioneering missions in this endeavor is NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS. To be honest, it's quite difficult to put into words what one feels about this rocket. It's a massive and complex machine that represents a significant technological achievement for NASA. However, it cannot be denied that it comes with a colossal cost, continuous delays, and a sense of obsolescence that seems to mark an end rather than a beginning. This is perhaps the final gasp of NASA's Apollo era, which has hindered the space agency for six decades. NASA has finally acknowledged what everyone already knows. SLS is unaffordable and no longer capable of surpassing Elon Musk's SpaceX. Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. To continue operating the Artemis mission, NASA is planning to spend billions of dollars on the upcoming SLS rocket to the moon. However, according to a report by the Government Accountability Office published on Thursday, at current cost, the SLS rocket's key for the Artemis moon missions is unacceptable. Senior agency officials have told us that at current cost levels, the SLS program is unsustainable and exceeds what NASA officials believe will be available for its Artemis missions. It's a problem that NASA officials say they're working to better control, but the GAO says the agency still hasn't implemented its past recommendations, including plans to measure production costs to monitor affordability for their most powerful rockets. The SLS, the world's most powerful rocket, will allow NASA to return astronauts to the moon. In November of last year, NASA successfully demonstrated SLS Block 1 during its Artemis 1 flight test. It can be understood that Artemis 1 has generated a lot of excitement within the space community. However, the question that arises is whether this project should continue, even after it successfully achieved a portion of its landing mission. While Artemis 1 was ultimately a successful launch, the SLS program has faced a variety of challenges which led to significant cost growth and years of delays to that launch, according to the report. Indeed, the annual cost of maintaining SLS is more than $4 billion. For a comparison of cost possibilities when transporting payloads, the Block 1 SLS can lift 95,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, while the future Block 2 is planned to lift 130,000 kilograms into the same orbit. Comparable figures for the Delta IV Heavy and Falcon Heavy are just under 26,000 kilos and over 63,000 kilograms, respectively. Falcon Heavy costs well under $200 million a launch, a price that includes amortized costs of development and infrastructure. While the exact figure cannot effectively be calculated, the likely cost per kilogram of payload delivered to orbit by SLS is literally astronomical compared to what's available on the commercial market. Recently, NASA requested $11.2 billion in the fiscal year 2024 president budget's request to fund the program through fiscal year 2028. According to the report, that's on top of the $11.8 billion spent in 2011 developing the initial SLS. With such a substantial amount of funding involved, we might indeed want them to halt the SLS project. Many argue that the SLS program's goals aren't inherently aligned with space exploration, lunar landings, heavy lift capabilities, or other aspects of space travel. Instead, SLS seems to function as a mechanism primarily focused on channeling significant funding into various congressional districts. The program appears designed to incentivize delays and cost overruns. Completing it could mean the financial inflow comes to a halt. If NASA is serious about the program's stated objectives, it should pivot away from the SLS dead end and find ways to invest more deeply in the Starship program. To be candid, the moon program that NASA has entrusted to SpaceX appears to be superior to SLS, and it holds even more promise than any other program. With every launch, NASA has to spend over a billion dollars to send just one SLS up, and everything bar the Orion capsule is turned into a billion dollar scrap. This was state of the art in the 60s, and this is still all NASA's aiming for. The Starship, on the other hand, does this neat little trick that SpaceX has been perfecting for years now. It returns to Earth and lands in one piece, both the super heavy booster and the Starship upper stage. The booster that launched the crew Starship can also be the same booster that launches the Starship tanker, repeatedly if necessary. Nothing gets thrown away, everything gets returned for refueling and reflight. The expense equation now suddenly makes a giant backflip, as instead of building a billion dollar rocket each time you want to send up a 40-ton payload to Cislunar space, 
you now only have to worry about fuel and ground support expenses for your launch. The estimated cost for each Starship launch is around 2 mil a launch, which includes somewhere between 750 to 900 grand for fuel and the rest for ground support and 2,000 times less than the launch price of SLS. There are heaps of other reasons why the Starship totally makes the SLS obsolete. Ranging from the fact that Starship uses revolutionary new engines that have never been flown by anyone else before, while the SLS is a holdover from the space shuttle. NASA has 16 leftover shuttle main engines and 14-foot-long cones that were cluttered in arrays on the bottom end of the shuttle orbiters. Those will be repurposed to power SLS. However, it's evident that not only is this technology outdated, but it also comes at a higher cost due to the refurbishment required for reuse. Besides, the SLS is a triumph of traditional, no-risk-taking conservative thinking that's delivered something that's based on 1980s technology and performs no better than a 1960s Saturn V. The Starship is a new take on rocketry that's physics-driven with a job to do, with no input from vote-seeking senators, a luxury that only a private company can afford so long as it's funded by a driven billionaire. This is one of the reasons why SpaceX has consistently been ahead of NASA since the early days of the company. A statistic from 2022 reveals that in space missions, NASA has witnessed an average cost overrun of over 90%, while SpaceX has incurred only a modest 1.1% cost overrun on average. SpaceX projects tend to take around four years on average, whereas NASA's typically take about seven. Interestingly, both NASA and SpaceX tend to promise faster delivery than what actually happens. SpaceX accomplishes in four years what they initially claimed would take three, while NASA takes six or seven for tests initially projected to take just four years. It's clear that Starship remains at the forefront, holding the promise of showcasing awe-inspiring achievements as its orbital missions approach. However, it's still too early for NASA to completely abandon the SLS as they're persisting with this costly machine. Therefore, they must ensure full compliance that the requirements for disclosing expenditures associated with the SLS is mandated by government officials. In a report in April, the GAO found that to make human spaceflight programs more affordable, NASA needed to provide more information about long-term program costs and take actions to reduce those costs. But NASA's not pursued this course of action. Instead, they've informed the report's authors that they intend to monitor production costs and affordability of the SLS program via the five-year production and operations cost estimate. Furthermore, according to the report, these tools are deemed inadequate for establishing a reliable cost baseline for the SLS rocket program. This deficiency raises concerns about the ability of taxpayers to accurately track costs and performance within NASA and among its contractors over time. Additionally, the report points out that NASA has not consistently updated its five-year production cost estimates for the rocket. Another issue with NASA's cost estimates is their apparent failure to account for delays in the Artemis missions. For instance, it's highly likely that Artemis II mission, involving a crewed flight around the moon, won't launch before 2025. Intriguingly, the report mentions that some of NASA officials asserted that these mission delays would not impact the cost estimates of the SLS program, a claim that appears highly improbable. As per the report, some NASA officials told us that changes to the Artemis mission dates should not affect the SLS program's cost estimate, while others acknowledge that the program's cost estimate would be expected to rise to accommodate the delay in the Artemis IV mission, which shifted from 2026 to 28. Faced with GAO's skepticism, NASA officials have also developed plans to address cost reduction for the SLS program over time. However, these plans remain speculative, with no specific public action taken by NASA at this stage. Well, that's it for today's episode. We certainly hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.